Saudi Arabia will now be responsible for promoting gender equality worldwide. The kingdom has been chosen as the next chair of the UN's top forum for women's rights, despite its own questionable record at home. The kingdom's ambassador to the UN, Abdulaziz Al-Wazil, will lead the commission on the status of women. Saudi Arabia's unopposed bid has been heavily criticized by human rights groups. The Saudi government has repeatedly jailed women's rights activists. Louis Charbonneau is the United Nations Director at Human Rights Watch. And I asked him earlier how much power Saudi Arabia will have as chair of that commission. So it is the main body for promoting women's empowerment. Um, it's a terrible look. If you were to draw up a list of the 10, 20 worst countries in the world, those least qualified to be the face of the United Nations fight for gender equality and empowering women, Saudi Arabia would definitely be among them, and it might even make the absolute you know, smallest top group. So the, the message that it sends is quite a bleak one, because um, next year will be the 30th anniversary of the 1995 Beijing Declaration on Women's Rights, which was really a watershed moment for women's rights. Since that time, over the last three decades, we've seen many attempts to push back on women's rights. You know, the country is promoting you know, traditional family values. We see this in Russia, but not just Russia. We've seen it from other governments, not, not just in um, the Muslim world, but also in Europe. We see it in the United States mm. with the pushback on abortion rights. So now, for the 30th anniversary of that important moment, the face of the UN's work mm. on women's rights is going to be Saudi Arabia, a country that jails women for pushing for their rights, uh, a country that still has enshrined in law male guardianship. That is not the country that should be holding the gavel and being that public mm. face of the fight for women's rights. Uh, Louis, uh, Saudi Arabia's bid was unopposed. Uh, was there any effort to find a different country uh, to lead uh, that commission or what kind of horse trading uh, led to this uh, outcome? Yeah, th that's a good question. It's really disappointing that so many countries, the, the 45 countries that are members of the Commission on the Status of Women, uh, I don't see any evidence that there was uh, an attempt to get um, a candidate that would be better at promoting women's rights or would be a better face for this important body. And, and that, that is a, a huge disappointment. And, and, and it's not just the 45 countries that are on the commission. We could have seen important member states like the United States, um, Germany, others who, who aren't voting members there right now, but certainly carry a lot of influence. We haven't seen any evidence that they tried to do anything. There was a lot of complaining privately. Diplomats were telling me, oh, this is terrible, but it's too late. And if they were to call a vote or to push against Saudi Arabia, then there would be some sort of retaliation that would uh, undermine the work of the commission. So they figured that it was better to just uh, suffer with this for mm. another year. But I should add that in December of 2022, there was an important moment when, for the first time, a country was removed from the Commission on the Status of Women because of egregious um, uh, behavior of the authorities towards women and girls, and that was Iran. And that created a precedent that there has to be a minimum mm. standard for upholding women's rights. The members of the commission, and, and in this case, we're not just talking about a member of the commission, we're talking yeah. about the chair, the one sitting there up front. So they did that for Iran. Why is Saudi Arabia different? Why mm. did all of those member states that, that you know, do a lot at home for their own populations, for their own women, sit back? and do nothing. Mm. It's a slap in the face to women's rights activists around the world. And we can now return to our top story. The United Nations picks Saudi Arabia 
to head a women's rights commission. And we can now speak to Bissan Fakir. She's uh, with Amnesty International and their campaigner on Saudi Arabia. And she joins me now from uh, Beirut. Now, Saudi law, for example, enshrines male guardianship. What are the consequences of such a regime leading a UN forum on women's rights? Thank you so much for, for having me. Honestly, I don't know whether to laugh or to cry um, after hearing the news that Saudi Arabia was appointed to the Commission on the Status uh, of Women. Every day at Amnesty International, we're working on the cases of women who are currently in prison uh, because they have tried to defend uh, women's rights. And the job of this uh, Commission on the Status of, of Women is to promote gender uh, equality and to promote women's empowerment. I can tell you that right now we're working on the case of a young woman, 29 years old, a fitness instructor and a women's women human rights defender who's forcibly disappeared so her family doesn't know where she is. And the reason that she was locked up was because she tweeted under the hashtag end male guardianship and because uh, she posted a photo of herself in the mall without wearing a traditional abaya. So for me, this is absolutely farcical that the Commission on the Status of Women um, would have Saudi Arabia at its chair. And I must express my disappointment with the 45 member states who were on the commission and no one stood up to challenge Saudi Arabia's um, uh, appointment to, to the mm. commission. I, I think that their silence is a betrayal of brave Saudi women who are working so hard to promote gender equality and are paying huge, huge consequences. Uh, Bissan, what does this mean uh, for this commission's credibility and also more broadly for the UN's credibility? I think it is unfortunate that the Commission on the Status of, of, of Women decided uh, to appoint Saudi Arabia. I, I think it, it, it tarnishes their credibility to speak out against uh, gender discrimination. But the way that the UN has gone, we have seen the international community uh, go more broadly. Saudi Arabia has peddled this image. They're campaigning on this idea that they have somehow um, reached so much progress and reform on the issue of human rights. So you have the UN um, appointing it on, on its uh, com commission on the status of women. The Internet Governance Forum is going to be held in Riyadh in December, which is, um, a, you know, it, it's a conference about uh, about freedom on online as, as, as one of the things on its agenda, when actually Saudi Arabia is locking people up for its social for, for posting about rights on social media. So we're seeing the UN, we're seeing football players, we're seeing businesses, we're seeing world leaders show up to Saudi Arabia and just mm. sweeping human rights uh, under the rug. And unfortunately, they're falling for Saudi Arabia's PR campaign. And as Amnesty, this is very concerning for us because who is going to pressure Saudi Arabia to release brave people like Manahal al Taibi or Salma Shahab or Abdurrahman al Sadhan, all people who have been detained for their social media posts? Mm. Um, who's going to, to pressure Saudi Arabia to release them when everyone is rolling out the red carpet for Saudi Arabia? Uh, Bissan, you hinted uh, at this um, earlier. 45 UN member states serve as members of that commission at any point. Uh, how did this bid go unopposed? What kind of horse trading happened there? Honestly, I wouldn't be able to tell you what, what happens behind the closed, door at, at closed doors at the UN. We have seen Saudi Arabia diplomatically go into forums, whether it's, it's in the Human Rights Council or beyond, where it doesn't belong. Perhaps countries believe that if Saudi Arabia takes on these roles, they might credibly act uh, in order to improve human rights in, their, in the kingdom. Maybe it's, a, it's an issue of good faith. And if that's the case, then what I would say is that these member states must call on Saudi mm -hmm. Arabia to release all women human rights defenders, mm -hmm. to end male guardianship, and to ensure uh, that there's no gender discrimination. They have these member states have let Saudi Arabia through the door, and now Saudi Arabia must show mm -hmm. that it is up to the task of being chair of the Commission on the Status of Women. Bissam Fakir there from Amnesty International. Thank you very much. Thank you.